Welcome to another edition of Brews and Cruise. I am your host, Chris Jacobson, and on this episode, I have my uncle on the podcast who has a ton of stories that relate to not only, as you can see, maybe some Jack Daniels, but also to cars, racing, and many more other things that we're going to talk about. So, Terry, or Terrence, or Uncle Terry, however people know you as, welcome to the podcast. All right. Okay. Glad to be on here. Yeah, yeah. That's long time coming. Now you requested Jack Daniels when I asked you what you wanted to drink. Yeah. And you want to drink it on the rocks to start with, and then maybe move into a Jack and Coke. Maybe a little later. Or maybe yeah. a little later. All right. So we can. Uh, we'll get these bad boys poured up here, and I'm gonna. I'll get some ice. You like it on the rocks? You said. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna just make two of these for us. So let's talk about. <laughs> Why do you like Jack Daniels? It's popular amongst a lot of people, but I'm not the biggest fan of Jack Daniels at all. So, well, what did you, you're, you know, years ago there, I started out with Jim Beam. Yeah, that, was my, that was the first I had drank was a bourbon whiskey. It was Jim Beam. Okay. And we were down in Knoxville, Tennessee at a bar, and I ordered a Jim Beam and Coke, and he says, we don't have Jim Beam. We got Jack Daniels. I said, well, I'll try that. And I've been uh, hooked on it ever since. So you've been hooked on Jack Daniels ever yep. since they didn't have bourbon in Nashville. Right. So what were you doing in Nashville? Truck driving. Okay. Driving. We down there, we had to stay overnight because we had to unload in Knoxville. And that's, uh, we sat at a truck stop and there's a bar right next door. And that's how that all started. So, so you're a truck driver. Yep. And you've been doing that for how many years now? Oh, geez, since uh, 1978. 1978. And what was your first semi that you've ever had? Old 1973. <laughs> <laughs> well, cheers first. Cheers on our Jack and the Rocks. Ja I, you know, I've never actually had Jack on the Rocks, so this is going to be a first for me. Well, you don't drink it fast. That's, that's why it's called sipping whiskey. Oh, yeah. Well, I know that. Because you don't drink it straight up for you. But actually, this is better than I remember it being. I, I, I liked it. It's kind of like a sweet flavor to it. The well, thing is, you get like two fingers at a time. That's right. a shot. Yep. You will well, get the whole glass. <laughs> <laughs> well, I could have given you the whole glass, and then we'd have some really good stories popping and, out. And uh, yeah, so that's what uh, that's where I started, and then then uh, we were down at uh, Lynchburg, Tennessee, down there at Jack Daniel's Distillery. Yeah, that's where we they're from. That. We took the motorcycles down there, being a bunch of guys. Okay. And then we went on uh, on the Dragon Tail. Well, what's the Dragon Tail now? Dragon Tail, I believe, was the what they called the Copperhead Road. That was where the Moonshine Boys ran down. Okay. It's called Dragon Tail Road. Sure. And that's where all the Moonshiners were. The guys from back in the 20s when the Prohibition era was yeah, happening? Yeah. yeah. yeah that's their, you know, all in moonshine and old cars with big motors in them. Okay. Painted in, uh, different. Cops couldn't see them. They'd at night run at night with no lights on the road. And sure. That's the way they were. Well, and that, that kind of brings it up to the Speakeasy Studios because the Speakeasies were due to the whole Prohibition era, right? Yeah, so now uh, Moonshine. What, what oh, see, it? Uh, I think the Speakeasy Studios were like in New York and Chicago sure. back then. Yep. They had bars called Speakeasies. Yeah. Chicago area. Yep. Yeah, well, and Justin and I, we went on a motorcycle ride last year to Milwaukee, and there was this place. It was called Wizard Something, and you had to go down some stairs into like this basement area, and it was the brewery, so it wasn't exactly a Speakeasy since alcohol is legal nowadays, but it felt like you were kind of going down because – if you'd have walked in, it just looked like a normal building, but then you had to know to go down the two flights of stairs, and it was in like a basement area, so it had kind of a speakeasy, I think, feel to it. And then Brett, he knows some places out in Nebraska that they're called, I think, speakeasies, even though it's just a bar. But he's going to take me to one of them in September when we go watch a Nebraska football game because they're playing University of Northern Iowa. Oh, so God. he asked if I wanted to go. So now, uh, Dragon's Tail. Why do they call it the Dragon's Tail? Well, because it's got 125 curves in it. Oh, so it's the shape of a dragon's tail, roughly? Well, you know, like this. Yeah. They actually have every year races how long it takes you to go at 17 miles yeah. until you're back to the start. Sure. And they actually got, guys got Suzuki's, you know, big 
Suzuki's all built up, and they go down through there pretty fast. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it's a race every year. Okay. Yeah. So now let's go back to your truck driving because I think that'll kind of start to get to the point where we're going to get to. But So truck driving, you've been doing that since 78? Well, I started in, uh, I started, I think, yeah, 1978. Yep. Okay. And I had a 73 international cab over. Okay. An old Detroit. <laughs> Jeez, what, a, <laughs> what a hot rod that was going yeah. down the road. Okay, and did you do overnights, or were you doing just single-day trips? Well, back then, I was working for J.R. Shugel out of New Orleans, Minnesota, okay. pulling a hopper, grain hopper. Yep. That was just pretty much overnight-type stuff, and then deliver the next day. Okay. Yep. So where did you all deliver to? Oh, like in the cities, we hauled grain. Okay. Like all the uh, mills and everything, yep. Savage, Minnesota, and down to there where they dump grain and put them on barges. Okay. Yeah, that's where you went. Because when I remember you doing truck driving, it was going, always going out to California and back. So what was that one? Oh, that was in 19... Uh, when was that? 1985? Uh, I think I had an 84 Peterbilt conventional. That okay. I bought a new one. And I was on with Martin Transport. Oh, oh yeah, I've seen them. They're still around. They're like blue yeah, and white. that's when we started running California. Okay, what kind of stuff were you taking to California? Oh, all kinds of general freight. Sure. So a little bit, but pretty much all dry freight. Sometimes a little reefer freight, but okay. But uh, well, I, I used to pull doubles all the time when we used to haul malto meal out of Northfield, Minnesota. Okay. Malto meal plant. Is yeah. the doubles? Does that mean the two semi trailers are hooked together? Yeah. The yeah. smaller, two smaller right. ones. Right. Okay. Yeah. Now I remember one time <laughs> when I was younger, you gave us some juicy fruit that came off of one of your. <laughs> one of your trailer loads, and you gave it to Brett and I. You gave us some Juicy Fruit gum. Yep. You remember that? Well, do you remember the story that went with it? Because <laughs> everybody else does. What? So <laughs> that day when you gave us Juicy Fruit gum, it was the 4th of July when Brett and I were in, like, wow, fifth or sixth grade. And then we were throwing those. We were lighting off black cats, and we were throwing them and throwing them. And as Brett threw one, it, you walked right in the way, and it snapped right here. <laughs> Right here by your chest. <laughs> you, oh, God, my tit. <laughs> and Brett always remembers that story, but that was the day he gave us juicy fruit, and that's how I remember that story. <laughs> yeah, see, years ago, you could uh, swipe stuff. Like that, oh, know? geez. Yeah, we well, used uh, I mean, there was times we hauled craft cheese at a craft yeah. in, uh, down in Champaign, Illinois. Sure. Heck, you'd get out the road. Dig down in the middle of the, take a box of cheese up, <laughs> put it back over. Get some free cheese for a few weeks. Yeah, nobody noticed because it was in dug down in the middle of the pile of boxes. Right, know? right. But yeah. What happens if a semi ever overturns and the stuff falls out and people take it? Then what happens? Well, I don't know. They pretty much guard that stuff nowadays. Yeah. So back they in come the day. back with, um, you know, bobcats and yeah, you know, scoop it all up and okay, whatever's good they salvage. You know. And if, yeah. if anybody swipes it, they won't. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Well, I know sometimes if a train over turns over, some people will swipe some stuff yeah. off of that. Oh, I remember when Elma the train tipped over years and years ago, and Dad went up and found a bunch of silver. Oh, yeah, I've heard that story before. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, which one did you like better? Do you like doing day trips, or did you like doing the whole week long out and back? Out and back, pretty much. That's why you, that's the one. night trips are hard. You know, you got to run all night. This way you can go out, take two days, three days to get there. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. How many hours can you drive at a time? Is it? Well, when it came out with the electric logbook, 10. Okay. But years ago, I can drive as many as you wanted because you had a paper logbook. Oh, sure. Just yeah. do whatever. So the, fa so the faster you got there and back, the more time you had off? or Well, the more money I made. The faster you got there and back. Okay. Do you get paid per trip or do you get paid by salary? How does that well, work? Well, you get paid uh, so much a load. Okay. Percentage wise. Sure. Yeah. So they just give you. A now, are you in charge of all your expenses or does the company pay well, for your expenses? Well, you are. Uh, like, I was an owner operator. Okay. So I had to pay for my fuel and everything and okay. all my expenses. Sure. But then we got 78%, 80% of what we hauled. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So if it was a hundred thousand dollars, you got seventy eight percent of that. No, or you just like got that? that's that. You had to get what the company got. Right, right, okay. So the company got probably six, seven thousand, and you got 
eighty percent of that. Okay. That I was just doing round fuel. figures. I was doing round figures. Yeah. I don't know what what things cost nowadays. But I remember talking about speakeasies. Your great grandpa, dad's granddad, has a speakeasy in Winona. Did he? Yeah, uh, I've been your great grandpa. Right, my yeah. grandpa. Yeah, he had. I forget where it was, but they had it in the basement. <laughs> at the house. At their house. Yeah. Now, was it the one that Grandpa grew up in? Right no, over by Huff Street. No, I think or? it was one down by Huff Street or someplace. But anyway, they had it look like a pool table. They had what look like a pool table? The bar. Oh. Where everybody sat. Yeah. And Grandma would sit at the doorway, and had a rope. By her chair. Sure. And when they were coming to check them out, the police, she would pull that rope and the bell would ring downstairs. Nice. And they'd flip it over and it looked like a oh. like a pool table. <laughs> that is, they did that. Everybody huh? would go out the back door. They had a basement door. <laughs> oh, man, that's kind of cool. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. So, okay, uh, let me, was there a code word to get in or you just had to know what to do? How They know like it wasn't the police. Well, the cops would knock at the door. And nobody else would. Yeah, they you know they they would knock, and Grandma knew where they were. She was upstairs, yeah, yeah. watching. Sure. She'd look out the window, and there they were. Yeah. And then she'd grab a rope next to her and pull it, and the bell would ring downstairs. And that means, hang on, they're here at the door looking. <laughs> so so the cop, we go. cops just would show up and do random checks, or yeah, what? Or yeah, they had yeah. a hint that there was somebody doing that. Yeah, I could see back then there was the prohibition days. You, yep. know, you just uh, couldn't. Really sell whiskey. He had to kind of go to little speakeasies. And yeah. People would go there and have a little bit at night and take off, you know? Sure, yeah, sure. That was the way it was. Do you, do you ever know or do you know what would happen if someone got caught at all or not? Oh, I imagine they'd throw them in the slammer. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's kind of funny. Did you see, he, Grandpa used to make his own uh, beer and stuff back sure. then. He had his own brew. Oh, really? Yeah. And they said uh, Grandpa Brown. He, was the best brew maker in Winona. Really? Back to when Dad was young. I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah, that was a lot. Well, that's a good story. I'd never heard that story before. That's yeah. kind of neat. Oh, yeah. He was a, he was a brewmaster. And they said, <laughs> so George Brown was his name. Okay. Yep. Grandpa George then? Yep. Wasn't one of the brothers named George? Or not? Yeah. Yeah. One of his kids' name was George, yep. too. Yep. Oh, that's a good story now. Maybe that's why I like speakeasies. I don't know. I didn't yeah. even know about that. Um, so he used to brew his own beer. Did he make moonshine and all that, or just beer? I was don't it? know, but he he had the best brew. Yeah, yeah, he was the best brewer. Everybody liked his his stuff. So, yeah. So my question is, how did things not get word get around town? That wasn't what's confusing to me. I mean, well, secret. Yeah, I don't know, but it's pretty secret. I feel like someone would come and rat someone out for a hundred bucks back then. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's just why I feel like hundred bucks so, uh, back then would go a long ways. I don't know if you, back in them days, I don't know if you want to rat anybody out. <laughs> you might. Like the up. Wild Wild West? <laughs> Just shoot them at the door? Yeah. Well, I suppose that's true. So, okay, that's, that's a good story that I had no idea about. Uh, now, the other thing you're big into is, which goes along with Brews and Cruises, you're into racing, and you've been into racing probably just as oh, long as since, truck driving uh, or longer. Since 19... 19- 71, and I was drag racing motorcycles back then. Okay. Yeah. You did motorcycles first. So what? You did motorcycles first? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I had a Suzuki 1100 all built up. Okay. And then what What are, what are do you like better? Do you like cars or motorcycles? Well, cars are a little more safer. Uh, of course. Motorcycles are, you know, you get easily wreck it. But then you had leather pants on and leather vests and everything on. So have, did even you, if you had to slide a little bit of like that. <laughs> did you ever fall off? No. Or? No. no. What was your quarter mile time on a motorcycle? I think back then I was running 1050s. That was okay. about all. You know. And then when you got the cars, what's a good time? Or what were you running with a car? Well, the first ones I had was uh, like 1090s, 11 seconds. But then the uh, big I built was nine something, nine fifty. Okay. And so now we got this rail. I don't know what that thing's gonna run. Yeah, because you're building that up from the ground up, weren't you? The rail. Yeah. yeah. I built that one from ground up. So That's when why you I hate to get rid of it, but <laughs> when do you plan on racing it, or well, or are you just gonna sell it? I'm gonna start pretty soon. We got pretty much everything done. Yep. We were gonna take it here a couple weeks ago up, 
but I didn't have the roll bar padding. I forgot to put the roll bar <laughs> padding on. So they'll automatically, because Rock Falls or Amber, you know, we used to yep. call it Amber Green. That was years ago. Okay. Now it's called Rock Falls. And they're very, very strict on safety. Okay. I mean, if one thing is missing, you ain't going to go on the track. So well, you, they can't afford the insurance is high. Yeah, I suppose. You can't afford to have somebody wreck out there and then claim a big insurance claim against you. you know? Right. So do you bring, like, a checklist along whenever you're about to race and make sure, hey, I got all these things before well, I leave the Well, that's pretty much house? all every time. Every time, yeah. Once you're once it's did it the first time, it goes all the time. Okay. Every, nothing changes. Right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so have you ever had any accidents in the cars at all? What? Have you ever wrecked a car drag racing no, or not? No, never. So you never had a wreck. Well, that's good news. Never had a wreck, <laughs> as long as I've been racing. That's good. And now we sponsored your newest, uh, your newest car. Mm. So Jacobson Real Estate's on the side of it whenever it makes its yep. debut. Uh, so Rock Falls, for those who are listening, that's up in Eau Claire, Wisconsin, if I remember right. Yep. Yep. And so it's not that far away from here, about an hour and a half. Uh, when was the last time you ever raced a motorcycle? Oh, Jesus. That was many years ago. <laughs> many, many years ago. Okay. So then when you got into car racing, what year was that, roughly? Well, racing cars, I think we were in 1978. Oh, okay, so that long 1980, ago. 1980, you know, we started. Sure. Well, no, it can't, not because my Suzuki was an 81 model. Okay. So it had to be later than that, so. Okay, and so you're not sure what you're going to do with the newest one. If you do try to sell it, what, what's a drag racer, what is someone that wants to buy a drag car looking for? Are they looking for a complete setup or are they looking for? Well, I would sell this complete. Complete setup? Okay. Years ago, people break it up. Okay. Hey, you can buy the chassis without the motor, the tranny. Yeah. And take that out, but I want to sell the whole thing. Sell the whole thing as is. Yeah. And what do you expect the time would be on this car if it were to go a quarter mile? Well, then I think it's going to be eight seconds. Eight seconds? Is that good? I don't even know. Well, that see, this car runs super calm. Okay. See, when you when you run with a La Vega, I could run super gas, super comp, and super anything because I sat on the left side or right left side of the car. See? Mm -hmm. Now this, you sat in the middle, and you either run super comp or super pro with it because hey. they, they have to. You know, you got to sit on one to run the other like a car, you know. Oh, right, right. So this is this car runs super comp and super pro and comp eliminator if you get a big enough motor in. But, okay, you know. so there's regulations on what you can do for each level? Uh, Wait, see, now, like running super comp, 890s is the index. What's that mean? <laughs> That's how quick it goes. That's how fast you got to go to run super comp. 890 was that? Yeah. Eight, was 890? Like 800, is no, 8 not 8.90. Oh, 8.9, got it. Seconds, seconds. Seconds. Quarter okay, mile. gotcha. And Super Pro, you can run anything. Okay. Now, like Super Gas, you could run, if you wanted to just run Super Gas, it was 990s. Okay. And if you wanted to run Super Street, it was 1090s. That's how different it was. Okay, so like But a, you could use the same car to run each class. Oh. But you got uh, throttle stops in it to oh. shut it down, you know. Sure. So it, you know. Sounds complicated. <laughs> I don't know how well, you can... Like the, this car here has got what they call a mega 450 delay box in it, and that, that's complicated. <laughs> I can't even figure out how to, how to even put the time in it, you know. But. Yeah. So um, now when it comes to racing, have you ever raced anything else, like dirt track racing? Have you ever done that before? I remember your dad had a dirt track car. Remember he did, your, yeah. And I drove it around the did track you? up here by... Oh, yeah, Mississippi Town Thunder City or, or whatever it's called. Used, yeah. used to be called Trioval. I just drove it around. Yeah, we never raced it. I don't know who did race it. Well, my dad raced it for one year in, I think, 95, but then Joe did most of the racing from what I remember. And then after, it was like a street stock car, if I remember. Yeah. He bought it from Dunbar. And then they turned it into the 21 car of the Century 21 because he owned Century 21. And then I think the next year they got into, uh, what's the next step up from street stock, like super stock or something like that? Yeah, I think super stock or yeah, cause modified. Then modified's the next one up yeah. past that. So I think it was super stock. And then Joe did pretty much all the racing after that for the next however many years that went for. So I wasn't sure. I knew that you kind of helped out in the pits every so often, but I wasn't sure. Well, I'd ever... be down there because your dad had an old bus fixed up the holiday. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> he had an old bus that had a hole cut out of the back of it, and they put yeah. ramps, and he drove up in there. They yeah. strapped it down, and 
I remember that bus. That was, I, so you know? he got that idea from someone else, I think, that was doing it as well. He said one time this guy came into the bus after someone had wrecked. They were bumping, they were bumping back and forth, and then all of a sudden the guy got wrecked, and he came on the bus looking for, I think, my dad, and he goes, is Rich in here? And he said, yeah, I'm right here. What's up? And he's like, hey, man, I'm sorry for, for spinning me out at one point. And my dad thought he was coming in to start some trouble or kick some ass or something. So that never <laughs> happened. But I hear that happens quite a bit in the pits sometimes. People oh, can- yeah, that, that, that stock car racing is. They just had one here with NASCAR. Yeah, I saw that. Someone. Oh, uh, I beat up. What the heck was his name? Uh, I can't remember. Uh, it wasn't Bubba Wallace, was it? No. Somebody. Arguing, and that boy even threw a piss, you know, a punch at him. Boom, yeah. knocked him down. Yeah, it can get a little, a little yeah, testy. I guess it's pretty wild stock car racing. Not so much in drag racing because, no. you know, if you got a bad light, it's your fault. Nobody else's. Right. You know? And you're supposed to go down your lane, not the other person's lane. Yeah, so. yeah. So, so now when you uh, race during, like, a race, are you racing that person or are you just doing a bunch of heats and then racing for the best time for no, everyone? Oh, you're racing against somebody else. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. When practicing, like, I want to do with it, that's, you can run as many times a day by yourself. You know? Sure. Because you have to get license. I have to get my license renewed for Super Comp. You know, yep. You got to have a license to go under 10 seconds to drive, you know. Oh, you have to have a license? Yeah, a special, special uh, comp license. What? So what does that entail to get a uh, special license to do that? Well, what we have to do now, is because I'm going to research it, because I left mine go many years ago, yeah. you know, and then uh going to have to, uh, I believe it is four times down the track at half throttle. Okay. And then the last two wide open. Okay. So that's what. And then yeah. they say, here, you can have your license. You just did that? Well, they got people watching you. Sure. You don't know who it is. Oh. Other racers. Yeah. And then they will say if they want to race against you or not. Okay. If they say no, then you don't get your license? Well, and... I don't know how that all goes. It's been so long since I did that. Sure. So you'll have to recertify if you want to do that then? Yeah. So that's what I'm going to be doing the first time I'm up there. Okay. And you haven't had yours in how long? Oh, geez, since <laughs> nine. Since the right. 90s? 20 years. 10 uh, years. Yeah. So that'll be interesting to see how that goes. So, um, now, the other thing I was gonna, I was just going to ask you, camp- oh, gas. So what kind of gas do these cars take? Because it's obviously not just unleaded well, fuel. Well, we run the high, cam, too. It's 110 octane. Where do you get that from? Oh, like Quick Trip right now in, in La, La Crosse, around Alaska. That's where you got to go to get it. Oh, geez, you got to go all and, the way down there to get it. Because they used to sell at Severson School years ago down here. Yep, okay. And then they quit. And then I think the guy up there by Quick Trip and Mini or Miniesca up there. Yep. Okay. What was his name that races? Uh, oh. Anyway, he used to sell it by, by the barrel. Sure. Then all of a sudden that kind of petered out. So now unless you buy a barrel yourself and put it in the garage, otherwise you got to run all the way down Alaska and get it. How Quick much trip. is it costing per gallon? Well, last time I bought some, like eight bucks a gallon. How many how many gallons do you need to race? <laughs> well, I got six, not one jug. Okay. So fill the tank up, probably go five times, and you're done. Well, okay, that's I guess not as bad as I thought. I but thought I got a small tank. Sure. And you want to guy down in uh, Dan's at Dan's Custom Auto in Alaska built a tank for okay. me. Okay. How many gallons is that? Six? You said, oh, or? no, it's probably four. Or four? Five. And you can rip, rip down and back well, how many times? Four well, times? maybe a couple. A couple? Three, and then you got to put up. gas in again. Yeah. Well, it's not as expensive as I was thinking. I was expecting it to be like $100 to race once. Uh, if it's not that, I guess it's not as bad. If it's like eight, ten dollars $10 a gallon, it's not so bad. So you got to go to special places to get this fuel. And it's 101 octane or something? 10. 110 octane. So that's that fuel smell that now, everyone loves. Severson's at the end was sending us selling 112 octane. Woo. At Vega would go with that. Really? That was some hot, you know, gas there. But the best you can do on quick trip in lacrosse, 110. Okay, and you gotta go down to lacrosse. So that means you gotta go fill up every time down there, or you just take a bunch of jugs. You better take a bunch of jugs along. <laughs> well, I remember it that. Co- it costs you to drive down, and it costs you to fill up and come back. <laughs> it costs so. you 100 bucks. Well, I just filled up my boat yesterday, and that was like 300 bucks. So it's a 90 gallon tank at premium octane, is what I always do, premium in the so boat. So where do you build, fill that up? At the, I just went to Sinclair. 
Oh, you take it to the Sinclair? Yeah, I just put it in the 91 octane. Okay. It says that's all you need. And then on the river, we have, I think, 88, but it's non-oxygenated, so they say that's fine to run in it, too. And I don't run my boat that hard. I just go down the sandbar and take out some drinks, and that's about, about all I ever do, and then grill out. We did that yesterday, actually, first time of the year. Finally got the boat out. But it costs a little bit to fill that thing up at 90 gallons. <laughs> So that's a, but I only fill up maybe twice in the year. It's not like, you know, Brett's got a boat that's got like a 150 gallon tank. Oh, wow. I think my buddy, uh, you know, Matt, yep. he just got a new one. I think he's got like 200 and 250 Old gallon Matt tanks. Just bought a new boat now. A new, uh, it's like, it's like his older one, but it's about 10 years newer. So it's mid nineties okay. if I remember right. But I think his new one has 250 gallon tanks on or something Ooh. like that. That's uh, that's a pretty penny to run was that. Was that thing. on the same order as the old speakeasy was that you had? What's that? Wasn't yours the speakeasy? You the speakeasy it? of the seas. <laughs> yeah, he's well, he's still in the same marina, but I don't know what his new name. I don't know yeah. if he has. It. I think it said unplugged on it to start with, but he'll probably change that name because that was the old that was the old owner's one. And then Brett just renamed him, and I want to. I can't remember off the top of my head what it is because I don't think he has a sticker of the name on it. But it's like. Azalea, I think it's Azalea is what he just named it. So I'll have to ask him about that. So then you said Corey's got his at the Bass Camp now? Now Corey's got his pontoon up at Bass Camp, but he also has a campsite because his girlfriend has a nice camper. Okay. So right. for him, it made more sense because he went up there and they got a campsite and a slip all for roughly the same price as he was paying just for a slip down Winona Marina. So it worked out better for him, but now he won't no. be going out by us as much so we'll no, have to no he's on the upper side of the dam or the lower upper uh um, he's at the upper side so you go past fountain city's dam and you go all the way up to Miniesca right before that other dam okay. that's bass camp yeah. there i mean i know you've driven by it many so times. he has to come through the dam if he wants to come down but you guys he know. does yeah or yeah. we vice versa will go up and see him possibly uh, but yeah, so he's up there now and it made more sense for him and his girlfriend, he said. So that's yep. it's fine because he's probably saving a few bucks and plus he has a camp spot too. Which it looks like he's got a really nice camp spot because he's right on the river. He's literally ten steps away from the river and his camper is right there. So he's got a really nice spot. Remember that car that we went and looked at in um or was it Illinois? Oh, yeah, yeah. that Camaro. Yeah, and yeah. you said, yeah. that smells like, going back to the racing fuel, you know, that yeah. smells like high-octane gas in there. And I'm like, yep. I mean, it smells good because we all love that smell. But <laughs> you said that, that one. That car was nice. That was fast. Oh, I bet it was. I don't <laughs> know how long it would have lasted. But it would have lasted a long time. But cars like that, you have to keep tuned. Yeah, that's and what you said. it costs you money to tune them because there's only certain people that can tune them. Something like that with a supercharger, you know? Mm -hmm. and yeah, and that's what kind of deterred me from it because it was a sharp-looking car, but then we also saw it had, like, some different type of tires on there, and we thought maybe that thing was used for street racing or so, maybe going up to a Rock Falls-type track and dragging it, and the guy that was there had zero knowledge of the thing, so that didn't make me feel comfortable that's buying why, that. That's why, you know, like the Corvette, I wanted to put a Pro Charger on that. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, you know, you got to sell a race car to do that, but then you got to find somebody can do it. But I found somebody over in Eckrick, Wisconsin, that knows how to do it. Put one on and tune it. Yeah, I think you were telling me they got that. a wheel dyno. They put it yep. right on a wheel dyno instead of a, yeah. Yep. You back it up on a dyno and spins. The, yep. Sure. Does that cost a lot of money to tune something, or not as much I as people might think? It costs. I know the Pro Charger is nine thousand dollars. Oh, just for the Pro Charger. You're better off buying a whole new car with the Pro Charger on it. Yeah. Well, when you're talking about Pro Charger, are you talking about a Supercharger, or are they two different things? Well, they're pretty much close to a Supercharger. Okay. Yeah. Because my Mustang that I had had a Supercharger on it as well, and I don't think I ever had any problems with that. And my truck that I had, the Shelby truck, that also had a Supercharger on it as well. And I don't know. I never got them tuned, so I don't know if they were putting yeah, well, out they what they should. Yeah, they probably don't go out of tune that much. That's why when so. I bought it, I was like, eh, if there's a supercharger on it, it has to be from the factory because I don't want someone that threw some crap on there hoping that they knew what they were doing. And so I didn't want to get that headache from that <laughs> Camaro because we yeah. remember we took that detour and we went about 30 minutes out of our way because we had to go down a detour all to be like, ah, oh, we don't really want this car. Yeah. So then we left, we left that car in the dust and uh, that was the end of that. Yeah. So then I found that Mustang and then I recently sold that now. So we'll move on to something different then, hopefully. My my goal is the Viper. And that doesn't have a supercharger. That's just naturally aspirated 500 horsepower. 
So that'll be it's a cool a V10, one. though. Yeah, it's a V10, yeah. though. Yeah. yeah. So I looked at what oil changes could possibly be, and they looked about the same as what I normally pay, about 150 bucks. So it wasn't much different, so I'm hoping to get one of those then. So now you got they the core. What's that? They had a couple of them down at the auction at Jim's Run. Yeah, they had the 97s, and I didn't really want something the red that old. The red and blue one, wasn't it? There's a blue and white one. I what did that one go for? 70. What, the red 30, wasn't it? 35? Oh, the, that one went for 37, I believe, yeah. the red one. Yeah. But the red one was a little rougher condition than what well, I was. Uh, the one I'm looking at in Rochester is only got 10,000 miles, and it looks darn near brand new. Except for one little tire or a little curb rash on one of the rims. That's the only problem with it, I think. But other than that, that's my buddy said, I can get that fixed pretty easily. I said, okay, sounds good. That's not going to deter me from it because the rest of it looks like it's... You said something like 50000 in mind for that one? 58 they want right okay. now. So it'll probably come down by the time the money clears from the auction and I get it, it'll probably be down another $1,000. <laughs> Who knows? Well, at least it's just in Rochester and not all the way in Illinois because that trip we took, that was a long day. <laughs> all for nothing. So that kind of stunk. Uh, so you got a Corvette then, and you, uh, you've had many cars in your day, I'm assuming. Oh, they had Mustangs, they had yeah. everything, Camaros, everything. How'd you settle on a Corvette? Because I was with you when you bought the Corvette. That was probably like seven years ago. Yeah, that's the one we got, Rolling Stone. Right in Rolling Stone. Well, uh, not Rolling Stockton. So Stockton, yes. Yeah, Stockton. the guy who owned a factory out there. Yeah, I think it's uh, not TDI. It was the one just before, and I can't yeah. remember what it's called, but yeah. I don't know. We just... Uh, seen it sitting out there, and I had sold my Mustang to oh, Randy yeah. Shell. Yeah. And I didn't have nothing at the time, and uh, I asked him what he wanted for it, and they were trying to get twelve thousand out of it. So I said, "Well, I don't know about that." And next day I went back and looked at. It, I said, "I'll give you eleven five for it," and he took it. Oh yeah. Now today it's worth a lot more than that. Probably, well, it's at least worth more, but I don't know how much more how these things because it all depends. Actually, on when you go to an auction with a car, people want cheap stuff. Well, I don't know. If you go, like the same as the race cars, you don't want to sell race cars down by auction because people are looking for cheap stuff. Sure, you sure. You got to sell them on Facebook Marketplace. Yeah. There you got guys that are looking for cars like that, and they know what they're worth. Yeah. You go down to the auction with them, and I mean, they can go high. You know, just like that Mustang, hundred sixty yep. thousand dollars. That one, holy. Yeah. And that was an older one with three ninety in it. And them motors were weren't much. Really? Yeah. <laughs> well, blow up like that. <laughs> well, yeah. It all depends on the rarity of them. But yeah, you're right. Sometimes people are going to an auction looking for a deal, and sometimes people are going to look for something rare, and then they spend outrageous amounts yep. of money, which that's fine too. So, how do you like your Mustang, or how do you like your Corvette more than? Because you had the Mustang before that. Would you like the Corvette better? Corvette's got a 5.7 liter in it. A Mustang had a 4.7 in it. Oh, that had the 4.7 in it, huh? Yeah. Oh, that the Mustang, of course, the Mustang, uh, the 4.7 liters were fast. Yeah. And the Mustangs, yep. They had, head, they had headers on it, everything right from the factory. Oh, really? Okay. And it was fast, but I don't think it was fast as the Corvette. No? Because the Corvette, when you stomp the throttle, that thing kicks into yeah. drive and it goes, you know. Does Randy still have the Mustang or not? No, he sold it to somebody who went on it, but I believe it's still around here yet. That was a nice car. I like that car. Yeah, you had some nice rims Had a four-speed in the sound nice. Yeah. Had kind of some exhaust on it. Sure. Yeah, that was, uh, it was, you had some nice chrome rims on it. It was black and red. It looked pretty sharp. So I was surprised when you got rid of it that you were getting rid of it because it was a nice-looking vehicle. But I think I have seen it around here still. I think it's still around, I don't know if it's in this town, Winona, but I think I've seen it before because it stands um, out pretty, pretty I don't much. think Randy has it anymore. He no. sold it to somebody in Winona. Sure, His sure. His cousin or nephew or something, I don't know. Yeah. I think they still got it yet. Okay. So I think it's in the area. Yeah, you used to take it to cruise nights and stuff. Yeah. And now yeah. you put a wing on your Corvette. <laughs> yeah. I guess we got cruise night coming up this Wednesday, huh? Uh, yes, I believe the first cruise night is coming yeah, up this Wednesday. Yeah. That's a good point to make because I f kind of forgot about it. I think it's the first Wednesday of every month for these three months. <clears throat> so June, July, and August is, I believe, it. And I have a softball game, so I'll come on over right when I'm done, I guess. Are you going to it? I'll go up if it ain't raining. <clears throat> yeah, I know. It's been a lot of rain I don't lately. know if Jody's coming down. She's getting rid of the Mustang, I guess. So. Mm -hmm. Well, she really lives for here. A new Highlander or something. Yeah, she wants to get rid of the Mustang and her Highlander for a new Highlander. 
So well, I guess whatever people want to do is what they want to do. Yeah. Uh, so now you've also were into motorcycles big time as well. Because uh, you've been into Harleys. I know that because you gave me a picture of yourself one Christmas next to your Harley, and I still have yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> and then I reenacted it, and I made one with my Indian before. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, didn't I, give it, didn't I give you a Christmas photo of it? I think we did. Yeah, yeah. I know I got one of you. <laughs> so what was your favorite Harley that you've ever had or favorite motorcycle you've ever had? Well, um, I had uh, uh, Wide Glide. At the end there, yeah, well, the double headlights in the front, and the wide, the Harley are, wide glide. Are you talking about the tri tricycle or the other no, ones? No, the other one I had. It the, was the brown uh, and tan one. Okay. Yeah. That was your favorite one. Then I had a, I don't know what the heck was the other one, a Springer soft tail. Okay. That was a nice looking bike. Had a chrome Springer front end on it with a narrow wheel right from Harley Davidson. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't you build the one that was like? Um, did you build a custom one one time? Yeah, that was that one with the um, long front end. It's yeah. never steered with a dam. Oh, gosh. I know. I took it around Buffalo City that one time. I go, I would never want to buy something like this. It's more of a looking piece in my mind. Of course, mind. the way I had the Triumphs with a side cart. <laughs> yeah, I still have that photo of Brett and I in it. We took it around uh, We took it around um, Buffalo City, yep. and I sat in the side car. That was an interesting concept. That was kind of – there's a guy in town that takes his dog around in it. He I remember uh, Jimmy Denov helped me put the side card on that. Oh, gosh. Good thing we didn't crash and fall off. I take off one way and Brett takes off the other. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, so and now have you ever gone out to Sturgis? To Sturgis? Yeah. Oh, yeah, many a times. Many a times. Oh. Well, I, I think the last time I went out there was the trike, the Harley trike. Yeah. Did you drive all the way out there? Did you yeah. trailer? Oh, yeah. You drove the whole thing. Yeah. How was that? Oh, that was. You know, a trike was like a car. Yeah. I had the trailer hooked behind it with like all my stuff in oh, it. Oh, that's right. See, what happened is that Jimmy Denoff took his uh, motor horn, his uh, camper out there. Okay. Then uh, we all stayed at the campground at Spearfish. Mm hmm And uh, so they left, uh, I think, a couple days before I did. Okay. And But I did good. I, got, I left here. I think Peterbilt had a... Big get together for all the people that had trucks and stuff. Oh, know, dinner up at their place. Okay. So I uh, stopped there, and then I took off. And at about nine o'clock, I got to uh, uh, Mitchell, South Dakota. Okay. Well, then the Jack Daniels took over after that. <laughs> Here <laughs> so we are. We, so we didn't get moving until late the next morning. That's all right. And then I drove to uh, Spearfish. Sure. Was it just you by yourself? or Yeah, just by myself. Oh, gee. But you'd get in with a bunch of people. And oh, you were riding with a group? Yeah. You, oh. There's people all the time. Sure. Four or five at one time, you just ride with them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That sounds fun. Well, that's my plan is next summer, next August, we're going to do it. But we're going to travel out there on bike. And I don't think we're going to take I-90 because that sounds miserable. Well, yeah, but you <clears throat> take the back roads like that's, through the uh, Badlands, you yeah. know, and up through there. I think you take 90 all the way to uh, Mitchell, South Dakota. Then you go down and get on 44, okay. 18, and that takes you through the Badlands. Then. Well, we were thinking about taking Highway 14. It adds like two hours onto the trip, but it's a little bit more comfortable riding because I remember coming back when I took a vacation out there, and it was crosswinds, yeah. and that was miserable, even driving a car. So I can't imagine what it would be like driving a motorcycle that on two wheels like that. So, you got any good stories from uh, Sturgis? <laughs> you said you want to call this podcast. What do you want to call it? Fast cars. Oh, the, uh, faster women, faster cars, older whiskey, and more money. <laughs> oh, more money. Well, it sounds like there's no money to be made. <laughs> so, uh, well, um, how many times have you been out there then to, this, to the rally specifically? Oh, Jesus. I started going out in 19... 1979. Oh, wow. Started all your adventures. Oh, before, yeah, 1979. Back there and back then, Sturgis was way different than Sturgis is today. Yeah. Because see all the family, it's a family thing now. Yeah, okay. And they can't have all that. Well, I don't know. I've seen some videos. Yeah. <laughs> they don't look that family friendly at some of those bars. But years ago, they used to ride around, no clothes on, the girls oh, and everything. Oh, and geez. Everything hanging out. That was... <laughs> 
but then you know that was back in the yeah. 70s you know? right it wasn't the, then it as the years progressed it got more popular yeah and then all of a sudden you had people with their kids coming and they sure. couldn't you know let that happen you know yeah. with the young kids around so. well, the one time i was out there was back in 2021 of march and obviously the rally wasn't going then so it was just a normal small town very nice simple town and so I can only imagine what it was like when the rally comes around for those was like a week and a half or ten days or something yeah. like that. Yeah, I remember when me and a bunch of us went out one year. We rode out. Well, we got just before Sturgis. There's a cemetery with all the veterans that are buried there. Okay. And there's a church there, and there's a dirt road, and we went back. That's yeah. where we we're gonna camp for the night, just to be quiet and sure. all, not all the noise. Well, we no more got our campsite set up, and here comes a bunch of motorcycles and black vans coming at us. <laughs> Who were they? And, and it was uh, it was either the Hell's Angels or the Outlaws or something. Sure. And they they were nice. They just came up and told us that's where they camp. Okay. Yeah. So we packed up our stuff. <laughs> we weren't giving nobody argument. You don't so, know what's in them black vans, you know. That's true, that's true. Have you ever encountered any people like that? That No. No. Everybody's pretty friendly out there. That's what I always think, too. I mean, yeah. some people go, oh, yeah, you got to be careful and all that. And I'm like, man, I think I don't know if you, you wanted to join the Hells the Angels or people, there's guys there that recruit you. Sure. You what's the recruitment process that? like for that? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. In fact, when I went up to the Donnie Smith bike show with the trike. Yeah. In the cities, there was actually a Minnesota chapter of the Hells Angels up okay. there uh, in recruiting guys. So, what does um, do you know anything about motorcycle gangs as to what they're about? Or well, I was with the Road Dogs for a while. Okay, you start out as a prospect. Yeah, what like what what is the point of them? I guess what do they do? Do they charity well, work? Or I don't know. They just steal or <laughs> what well, are we doing? I don't know. I don't know. But it's any of my gang you still as a prospect. Okay, and what's a you prospect mean? That you're, you're a grunt. <laughs> you're a grunt. What do you do? You got to change oil or what? Well, you <laughs> rake the yard. And you <laughs> rake clean. the yard. So, Get yeah, rake fix the yard. stuff, you know. It, it, yeah. That's what you are. Okay. Then after that, you earn your patch. Okay. And then what does that mean? Once then, you're, you're, then you're official. Okay. Well, a member of the club. Does it cost money? Yeah. <laughs> Does it cost any money? No. 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 I, no. You just, uh, like, I know my murder with the road dogs, you just had something, road, a pad prospect. Sure. That's all you had on your letter jacket. Nothing okay. else. Then once you got into the club, then it come to the signia road dogs. Yeah. Yeah. Then you was a member. Yep. So, so is there levels once you're in? Is there levels to... There's got to be someone in charge, I would think, like a president or well, chief you know, or you something. Got, you know, pretty much we worked at the gin mill up there. Okay. We're bouncers. That's what we are up there at night. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then you had... Uh, when the girls were dancing, guys get kind of frisky with them. You, sure. gotta, you know, that's... Don't do that. You know, you walk around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So... Oh, damn. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's quite a deal. Yeah, fast women. Faster women. <laughs> Faster women, less money. So, okay, so is there, like, a person that's in charge of each chapter then? Oh, yeah, that? president, vice president. president. Okay. What yeah. do they do? Just tell people, hey, here's what we're doing? and uh, Well, they take care of everything, yeah. Okay. you got Sergeant of Arms. Yeah. He's the guy that's got guns with him, you know, when you're okay. riding. Sure. Yeah. So. I'll see my speakeasy crew. We're just a, a group yeah. of guys that go around yeah. from breweries. So, uh, <laughs> so we're into nothing like that. We just have our little patch on the back that says yep. speakeasies, born and brewed. And then it says what town we're from. So you might need one of those, even though you don't have a motorcycle anymore. You might have to get one of those vests. <laughs> Let but everyone know. You know I'd, I'd even consider your, at your age, so. Ride down to Tennessee and take the dragon tail. Yeah, I know. You have said that before, and I think Brett's actually done it, but not by motorcycle. He was just visiting because oh. he goes down to Nashville a lot. I think yep. he took, like, uh, one of those Polaris slingshots around the dragon's tail, I think. But uh, we did it when we were down there. Yeah. Curves, the old pipes are dragging when Jeez. you come around to lean into this curve. 
Yeah. Now, there's some good roads around here. Like, going to Lanesboro is not a bad one. That, I mean, it's nothing probably like that. But, you know, going down to Lanesboro is not too terrible. It's got some nice windy roads that are kind of fun to ride on. You don't have to go 100 miles an hour. You just go 50 miles an hour, and you're good. But, you know, the Dragon Tail is a history thing. It's a, right, yep. it's a popular place for everybody to go. Sure. They, have, they have a lot of guys with these two-cycle Suzuki's and Yamaha's all built up. And yep. Crepes, they went by us on the back wheel, you know. We're going <laughs> so slow in the Harleys, you know. <laughs> they just go by you real fast. People yep. taking sport bikes there, too, and everything? Crap. Oh, yeah, Hayabusa's. Yeah. Hayabusa's are big. Suzuki Hayabusa's. Yeah, I had one. So did yeah, you. <laughs> they are really... I mean, if you can keep up with those boys, those boys know how to run them. They know how to lean into the... Yep. Crepes, yeah. They're gone out of sight before you even know what happened. My father-in-law is like that. He has a... Gold, a Honda Goldwing, automatic, but he flies through turns, and I'm like, he's the same age as you, born in 1950, and he's running rampant on that thing so much. So I don't know how he does it, but one time I lost him, and he, by the time I caught up to him, he was at a stop sign and getting stuff out of his trunk of his of his <laughs> <laughs> of his motorcycle. I'm like. Yeah. Holy cow. So, so he rides he rides hard when he goes. But uh, So now, your first time you ever went out there was like 1979, 78, somewhere in there? And when was the last time you were there with a the trike? Oh, let's see. Probably five, six, seven years ago. Okay. What was the difference, do you remember, from 70s to the 2000s? The scenery. Scenery. <laughs> a little bit more family-friendly now. <laughs> family-friendly. And it's... But there's a there's supposedly I forget the name of it, but there's a town in Wyoming that everybody goes to now. Okay. Because it's more open. Um, is that where Devil's Tower is? Yeah. What the heck is it's the not name? Casper, of that? is it? It's not Casper. I don't know if it's Casper, Wyoming, or not. But then I remember when one time I I guess I shouldn't say that because me and Jimmy Deniff went down to Colorado and. Arizona and New Mexico and up to uh, yep. Vegas and up to Yellowstone Park at home. Okay. So that was a, yeah, that was a trip. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Let me, uh, I got to check the camera real quick. I had a phone call come through. I want to make sure it's still rolling. Oh, yeah, she's still rolling. We're good. We're good, yeah. Huh? Corey was calling me. Oh. And I want to make sure the camera didn't give out on us. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to finish this off. I'm going to have my. Captain and Coke, or my Jack and Coke, sorry. <laughs> yeah, we got more stories yet to have, but I like Jack and Coke a little bit more, and so I'm going to transition. Got my bruising cruise. A little... Let's throw a little ice in mine there. Quick. Throw a little ice in yours? Yep. Here, you can throw as much as you want in there. I'll move the mic for you. Here, I can move the mic for you. There we go. Throw as much as you want. Oh. Get a little water in her. Here, I'll help you. Just do it like this quick. There you go. So, yeah, I guess we got to talk about going down to Arizona with the bikes and through there, and New Mexico, and up through the Grand Canyon. You've gone through there? Yep. Okay. We, actually, we were, in the, we were in the Grand Canyon where they got that glass thing that goes out over there. Oh, yeah, I heard about that. Yeah. So... Actually, that's, no. a, that, that's a pretty nice place to be, but you got to wear plastic over your shoes to not to scratch the grass, grass sure. you know. Oh, okay. You can walk around, but you go way out, you can look right down, and a lot of people can't do it. Do, what do you want in yours? Do you want Coke, or do you want... No, just give me a little bit. You want a, oh, you're yeah. just going to drink it on the rocks. All right. So, what do you want, two fingers? There, that's two fingers right there. Well, that looks like small. one. I don't know how small your fingers are. <laughs> there you go. Two fingers, Coke. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's get the mic back into position. I'm gonna do a little cat or Jack and Coke here. Are you really? Okay. I like I like the Coke. I'm more of a Captain and Coke fan, but. All right. So, anyways, you've gone down with the bikes all the way down to Arizona. Yeah. Well, and we we went out to uh, see Jimmy had some. His sister lived in uh, Colorado Springs. Colorado. Okay. Same place as the one I knew. <laughs> Colorado Springs. Oh, what? <laughs> Same place as Michaela lived. Oh, gotcha. but anyway, we went down there, and uh, we stayed in Colorado Springs overnight. They had a real nice place. You know, sure, we stayed there. But the next day, we went down and across into New Mexico and Arizona on 40. Mm -hmm. 
Then we came up, well, we stayed just before, I think we stayed just before, uh, what take was that? And uh, then we uh, went up, and then you went up to the Grand Canyon. Okay. Then we stayed in the Grand Canyon for a while. We walked around. Guy asked us, all these other campgrounds said, do you have guns? Well, first, that, we went over to Hoover to have it. Anyway, <laughs> we got to this Indian place up there, and the guy says, uh, you guys got any weapons on you? Nope. It's good enough for me, he said. <laughs> Hell of a checking in process. Yeah. So I, I, I had my 10 mag and Jimmy had a 9. But, but. So anyway, we, uh, we just uh, walked out on this thing, you know. You had to put them plastic things over your shoes. Yep. Because you don't want to scratch the glass when you're walking around. A lot of people couldn't do it. You didn't look straight down through the grass. Oh, yeah. You know, know. down to the bottom of the canyon. <laughs> Well, you know what? There's another place. Um, I used to take the kids on a field or on their class trip. We used to go to Chicago, and the Willis Tower, or as most people know it by the Sears Tower, they have a similar thing. You walk out and you look down. It is kind of freaky at first, but I've done it so many That's times. That's where uh, Ferris Bueller. Uh, Fer Ferris Bueller. Bueller? They, yeah, because they were looking over the edge. Yeah, Ferris I was Bueller. there once when me and uh, uh, when me and uh, Johnny, John, and a bunch of us went down to. Uh, a big concert at Toyota Park. Sure. That one weekend. Okay. Then me and John went, took the train or to go out there and we wa walked around up there. In Chicago? Yeah, in Chicago. Yeah, yeah, that's an interesting town. I think it's called, was it called Trump Tower then? There is a Trump Tower still there. Uh, it's so like all glass. Uh, but they have the Hancock Building too. That's another one. The Sears Tower is the biggest one. And then you got Which the Trump. Which one was the people from Ferris Bueller were looking out the window? Was that I, Trump Tower or was that? No, I want to say it was either the Sears Tower or it was probably yeah, the Jan, John Con them, Hancock yeah. building. Because those are the most popular ones. And at the John Hancock one, there's one where you you lay on the glass and then it tilts forward. And then oh, you tilt okay. like a 45 degree angle and you can look down at the then city. you can either walk out and look straight down the building. And then that, well, that one is the Willis Tower or the oh, Sears okay. Tower. Okay. Yep. Okay. yep. So this is pretty good. I like this. Yeah, so then we went uh, up through the Grand Canyon. And see, we're in Kingman, Arizona. That's where then you turn north to go to the Grand Canyon. Yep. And from there, we went up to Hoover Dam. So <laughs> we were checking into the Hoover Dam. <laughs> the guy asked me, you guys got any weapons on you? Oh, shit, what happened to my mics? Hold on. Oh, one second. Mike's got bumped offline, or what happened here? Or are we still rolling? Oh, we're still rolling. I don't know what happened to it. We'll go back to the Hoover Dam part. I can cut this out. That ain't no big deal. Okay, so you're at the Hoover Dam. Yep, so we went, to, we're going to go down by the Hoover Dam and by uh, Vegas there, yep. you know. And so we pulled in there, you know, with our trunk their bikes he had a trailer and i had one and yep first thing they come out asked you guys got any guns well we told them the truth yep well you guys got to go out hide them someplace and come back in <laughs> so that's what we had to do we had to go so we, so we went out on the hillside and found a big rock and put them under a rock <laughs> we got back in yes says okay yep Oh, and then we went in. That was pretty neat walking through the Hoover Dam. Through the Hoover Dam? Yeah. I remember yeah, seeing it. You got the turbines. You go down around by the turbines. Yeah. There. So I remember then, Chevy Chase did that in Vegas Vacation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> lost. Yeah, good. he ended up going back and forth. Right <laughs> yeah, up. put gum against the wall and trying to stop the... He said, now, anybody got any questions? Yeah, we're going to get some damn bait. Who's the damn, damn yeah, tour that guy? Was, who was that, Eddie that wanted Yeah, that? Cousin yeah. Eddie. Uh, so, okay, so you took your cycle all the way from Wisconsin, all the way down there and around and all that. Yep. How long does something like that take? A week, two weeks? Yeah, it took us about a week there. Okay. Well, then from uh, once we got done with the Hoover Dam, then we went to Vegas. Okay. And we stayed there overnight. Sure. Then the next day, we went up to Yellowstone Park. Faster women, more money, Vegas, yep. okay. Faster women, we went to the Cowgirl Bar. Was that a place? <laughs> I think there were... I think that place was all full of women that like women. Oh, jeez. So we were... 
And they looked like it, too. Boy, they were <laughs> muscles. Why, she was, yeah, Jimmy says, I don't want to get in a fight with that one. Maybe she was the bouncer. <laughs> <laughs> so you went out to Vegas. What did you all do in Vegas then? Well, we just hit a couple bars, and then we went. And It was kind of late when we got up there. Yeah. And Jimmy had trouble with his motorcycle, so he had to stay at the Harley shop. Sure. So it took us about two hours to get the lights fixed in it. Gotcha. So then we went up to, uh, well, actually, we went up to Mesquite, Nevada, and then we stayed there for the night. Well, it's 110 degrees. Jeez. It was pretty warm. <laughs> you were probably melting. So we stayed there for the night. Yeah. And the next day, we went up to Salt Lake City. Yeah. And then we went up to, uh, where did we go from there? I don't think, then the next night, we were in Yellowstone Park. Okay. Then we camped there. And the next day we went up to the hills and watched all the bears walking around. Sure, that sounds nice. And then we ended up in uh, ended up in uh, where did we go there? Oh, up to uh, oh, what was that place? It was the highest place up there, oh, ten thousand feet. They called it. Uh, anyway, we went up on top of the mountain there, and. Uh, it was snowing up there. There was snow up there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then we got down the other side. It was like 100 degrees of billies. But up on top, we went through snow, actually. Yeah. yeah. But do you ever have to worry with your bikes when it's like 100 degrees? Do you have to worry about them overheating ever? Uh, I mean, as well, long as Well, mine had a fan on it. Okay. That kicked in when it got hot. Yeah. Mine did. Now, I don't know about yours. Mine has a fan too, as far as I know, because yeah. it makes a whining noise whenever it gets too hot. But I didn't know if you're, you know, if you're consistently going. Obviously, the wind's supposed to cool it down, but at 100, 110, it ain't doing much cooling. But then we got down on the other time, other side by Deer Lodge, yeah, in Montana. And then we went over to Billings and stayed there for the night. Next night we got to Spearfish, South Dakota, stayed there, and uh, no, we got to Mitchell. We stayed there. Then we went downtown and had a buffet dinner because we were hungry. And uh, then we come home the next day. Was that the biggest trip you've ever taken? Was oh, that yeah. one? Yeah. And yeah. that one took about a week. How many people went with you? Just me and Jimmy did enough. Just two guys, huh? Yep. Nice. Yeah, when we go out to Sturgis, that'll be my furthest one. And that'll be, well, the idea is it's going to be me, Brett, Justin, and probably my brother-in-law, Mark, because he said he wants to go as well. So that'd be four guys. So I'm hoping it all pans out. But, again, that's over a year from now. So we're still quite well, a few. Well, you guys got to just say that, hey, this is the trip. This is how many miles it is. Yeah. You guys want to go the whole length, or are you going to peter out halfway out there, wanna go home? Yeah. It's a long trip. It is. It's and 700 I... and some miles from here to mm -hmm. Sturgis. I thought this is my idea was <clears throat> start and you take two days to go out, two days to go back, and then spend three days there. So that's a week. I figure if you went halfway and then did another half, you'd be out there, spend your three days, come back two more days, and that way you don't have to go and just beat yourself rotten trying to get out there. As well, fast years as ago, that's what we did when we had like Jerry Bollinger was with us. Okay. And well, we all had Japanese bikes. And uh, it's a little different riding them to the big Harley. I uh, know. <laughs> it's a little uncomfortable, so that will take a little uh, while. I think the first night we went out, we got to Mitchell, South Dakota. And we're about to Chamberlain, that? South Dakota. Okay. And that's where we uh, stayed for the night. Yeah. Then we went downtown to the, to the Silver Dollar Saloon. Yep. And that was the time I had Cindy with me. Of her back, she rode with me. Okay. And we come into the bar, and some guy started giving us a bunch of shit. I nailed him right in the nose. <laughs> Knocked him right in. Right at Sturgis? Nice. Oh, yeah, and, uh, Chamberlain. Oh, Chamberlain. So he went down, and uh, they, he went over to a booth and sat down and laid his head on the booth, and <laughs> pretty soon somebody said blood running around by his plate. Oh, man. Jesus. Yeah. Fucking guy, the cops coming. <laughs> she asked me what <laughs> You know, they asked me what the deal was, and I said, well, he was giving my friend there, Cindy, a rough time and hitting on her, and I nailed him right in the nose, put him right down at his ass. What'd they say? what the cops well, say? Well, they said it was, he was the one, everybody said that he was yeah. harassing us. That's good. What year was that? That was in 19... 
eighty one or eighty three. Oh, okay, so quite a while ago. Because I, I had the eleven hundred Honda CB eleven hundred. Okay. F. Now, that right. was a fast bike back then. Yeah, well, eleven hundred is still a pretty big motor, especially in something that's. I mean, that's a Japanese bike, so that one's probably a lot, a lot lighter weight than what nowadays motorcycles are. Yeah, <laughs> so that was our. Then, well, that was kind of the. Same year that Jerry got <laughs> divorced, and it was not, it was not it's a bad year. Bitching and complaining about everything, you know. So. <laughs> Early '80s, not a good time. Yeah. <laughs> not a but good time. One. So, uh, what else is go- going on? What are you doing nowadays? Because you're kind of what semi-retired. Well, I think I'm gonna retire. Yeah, so I'm just getting too old for this shit. <laughs> because you're still driving truck here and there, oh, aren't yeah, you? A little bit. Yeah. 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 Where do you go to now? Pretty much the northwest. Northwest. Yeah. Oh, you're still going way out there then. Oh yeah. 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 I, yeah because well, you're here in your seventies now. It's a long trip for anyone, yeah, for that matter. Yeah. Seventy-four. Time you to. You can't keep up with the young guys anymore. No, you can't. If you just get one of those electric semis that drive themselves, you'd be just fine. Yeah. Those Tesla ones that are coming out, I saw. Yeah, I see them. Some of them already. I think. Have, have you seen Walmart? them? Walmart. I think Walmart's got a couple of them. Really? Yeah. I have not seen one of those yet. I saw some. Oh, new- they look like a dolphin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, they're they're uh, really, you know, aerodynamic. Oh, I saw that. Well, the Kenworth is coming out with one I just saw on TikTok this morning. It's like the Kenworth something two, and you like sit right in the center, and it looks yep aerodynamic. Yeah, windows just, on. Yep. Yeah, that looks like something else to to do. So um, now, what I need to get the definition of what is a lot lizard. <laughs> What's a lot lizard? <laughs> well, because sometimes you I say it, lot lizard. <laughs> they're the ladies that work the truck stops at night. Oh, so they pump your gas and they perfect. come and knock on your door in the middle of the night and ask you want company. room service. <laughs> I call sales. I call, I call car salesmen lot lizards too, but <laughs> I didn't mean it in that route though. So that's good now. Someone got some knowledge on what that means out there. You don't see them anymore. No, well, in Atlanta, there Georgia. There's so many goofy drivers out there. They kill them, you know. They, yeah. You know, they don't do it no more like they did back years ago when I was. There's, yeah. <laughs> there's easier ways I to make money so nowadays. Made idiots out there. They kill them or something, throw them on the road, you know. So. Well, I know at the Atlanta truck stops down there where I went to train for wrestling. <laughs> They were still hovering around there at that time, I remember. That was like, oh, wait, when I first went down there. And then I went down there and I lived there for two years. And, boy, they were still hanging around every which way in the slummy parts of town. But there's easier ways to make money nowadays. Uh, You can go on the Internet (laughs) and do it in a lot safer environment. (laughs) That's for sure. So anything else going on that you want to add to the podcast at all? Well, you know, not much more than what we're doing now. Sure. Got things come up this summer. We gotta get out of the boat. You've been yep. out a couple times with me. We've gone down to Sullivan's before. Hopefully, we get the car going this summer so people can see your name on it. That'd be nice. I'm still waiting for people so, to see my name and call me up and say, I "Hey, don't know if we want to pull it through, I'd, what time? When do we have to? We want to pull it through to parade down here in Winona." Oh, well, that's a good because question. It's too late to get it in. And probably it's too late because I already know I'm driving for Miss South. Uh, Miss Southern Minnesota. Okay. And I know they have Miss America coming again this year. Uh, so they probably already have their parade lineup going through. Yeah. So Get it to the Buffalo City one. Fourth of July. Get to the Fourth of July one, Buffalo City, the doings. Get it to the doings. Get it. Put it in the right, festival. Put it in the festival. And then put a for sale sign on it as it goes through. Yeah. There'll be someone that'd be interested, I bet you. I'll put it on Facebook when I'm ready. I want to see, I want to run it. Then I know what it does. Yeah. Then I, if somebody asks you how fast is it, well, here, time slips don't lie. Yeah. You know, this is what it is. That'd be a good idea then. So, just, yeah. just saying, hey, we just built it. We, I, well, how do you know it even runs good, you know? Sure, sure. So, yeah, you got to run it a couple times. I mean, times. it looks nice sitting there. Oh, yeah. It's bright orange. It looks like it's fast, but you know, it's who knows? Chevrolet orange. Chevrolet orange. <laughs> Yeah. So, so uh, that's what it was years ago. It was Chevrolet Orange. Yeah. Oh, was that what they called it? Because then uh, Mopar had Go Mango, which was Go Man Go, but it was Go Mango. So Mango Orange. Yeah. Little tidbit out there for anybody that's watching or listening. So we got a busy summer coming up. Then we got car shows coming up. 
Are you coming to the car show here? Uh, not this weekend, but the next. Are you coming down the Winona Steamboat Days one, or are you going to be out of town? Oh yeah, that's that's the weekend from this. That's uh, June fifteenth. June fifteenth. Yeah. Yep. And I'll, yeah, I'll be around. That sounds good. I I'm I know part- the car is a lot easier to unload now than it was years ago. Yeah. The first time. Well, I just if we want to put it in a car yeah. show. Well, I just meant if you're coming down with the Corvette. <laughs> oh, the Corvette yeah. too, you know. Yeah. yeah, so a lot of car shows coming up. Uh, we got a lot of things coming up. Boat rides, get the car running, then possibly sell it or race it. There was some sort of thing at a rush for at a last weekend, a kind of a thing they went up to Lake City and back. What was that? I don't know. Yeah, it was like, you could come with your car or your bike or whatever. It's kind of a... Just a ride, deal. Yeah. just a ride along. Like, yes, I, I was gonna go, but it was rainy that day, two Saturday. It's been rainy every on. other day so yeah. far. It's been rainy every other day. Well, don't complain. It could quit pretty soon, and then everything would dry up. That was last summer. <laughs> we had that last summer. Yeah, they say the tornadoes are supposed to be more around here this year. Now. Really? Well, we've already had that. Uh, not this past Tuesday, the Tuesday before that, it was pretty bad. I was driving right home because I heard the sirens going off. It went, you know, Corey, obviously. The tornado went right over the hill by him and over the other side. And his house is, like, right here. And the tornado went right next to it almost. Who's? Corey. Oh, in Hammond? No, in uh, Rolling Stone. Oh, yeah. We just had that down here two weeks ago. See, that was the one that blew the barn down in, yeah. uh, in Rolling uh, Stone. Cochran. Oh, that too. it went right over, up the river, across the river, and... And then it hit the golf course <laughs> there and everything, tore trees. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I yeah. remember that old barn. That thing looked like I could have knocked it over with just a push. Yeah, they got it pretty much all cleaned up now. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, it, went right, it blew over some stuff in Rolling Stone. It went right next to my buddy's house and everything. And then when I was – I left the office because I heard the sirens going off. I'm like, I better get home and be with the dogs and stuff. And as I was driving up 43 going towards my house – it was just pure wind and rain coming down. I was like, I don't know if I'm going into the tornado or if I'm safe. Yeah. I saw two cars coming towards me, so I figured, well, if their cars are still on the ground, I'd probably be okay. <laughs> so I made it home safe, barely. So, yeah, well, I guess this is where we can probably end the podcast. We've had yep. uh, we had just a little bit, about you know, a third of the jack. So, <laughs> well, I'm sure you've had more than that in a sitting before when you were younger. but yeah. We'll, uh, we'll we'll call it a day there. We'll and call it a day. And when I was younger, that bottle would be going right now. They've been already gone. Well, you're not yeah. younger, and you're only getting no. older. Because <laughs> I was in my Glendive, Montana, one night, and the guy only had just a little bit left of one bottle. I said, "You got to get a new bottle. I'm here." And I said, "I'll drink that whole thing tonight." And I did. It was <laughs> empty. Of course, I wasn't too good a shape. No, I bet not. I bet not. I had to, I had to bend over between the fuel tank and the fender a couple of times. <laughs> <Dump. laughs> oh, I had to get rid of some of it. Well, this has been a fun time, Terry. Thank you for coming down. It's been a great yeah. time. And um, if for those who are watching or listening, don't forget you can watch this on YouTube or you can subscribe and listen to it on Spotify. You can listen to it on Apple Music, iHeartRadio, Amazon, Samsung, anywhere that you can pretty much get a podcast, you can listen to this. And this has been another episode of Brews and Cruise, and we're going to send you off with a big cheers. Have a great week. There we are. Hey. Okay.